This is a film about two days in the Egyptian Revolution. By the time you see it, you will know more about the outcome of the events we describe here. Most of the pictures, film and interview you will see were shot on the day of the great mass demonstrations, Tuesday the 1st of February. Amid the chaos of demonstrations of two million in Cairo and millions more throughout Egypt, we have talked to the people who made the revolution. The film and pictures you see come from a number of sources. The award-winning Egyptian director Ahmed Fawzi shot film and interviews. Others come from news sources. Other film was shot on a handheld camera. What you see is the Egyptian revolution as it happened on the streets of Cairo. This is the seventh day of the revolution. The first day was the 25th of January, a week ago. Then the call issued by a group of young democratic Muslim and left activists was answered on a wholly greater scale than any of them had dreamt. The demonstrations continued every day and on Friday the 28th of January, the day of rage, a huge protest burnt down the party headquarters of President Mubarak and attempted to storm the interior ministry. As young Dr. Mohammed Shafiq recalls, the protesters were only repelled by the use of lethal force. Some people who tried, as the demonstration expanded, to enter the Mohammed Mahmoud Street, where it, at the end of it the interior mystery uh, lies. Uh, I told you before, I'm a psychiatrist and I joined the, uh, the hospital. We, uh, we made uh, the square. I saw some of the casualties. So I was angered from the side. So I, I joined the protesters uh, uh, who rushed into the streets. They started to defend the Ministry of Interior ferociously. Uh, many wounded, uh, some of the casualties by the, by the rubber bullets from close range, from close, close range shooting. We started to evacuate our wounded and take the dead bodies and uh, things uh, um, became at peace for a while. We make a little funeral for the two dead uh, protesters. We started from a, a mosque nearby. The, 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 the crazy thing is anti-right anti uh, troops sh shooted live bullets at the funeral while we are carrying the corpses of the two protesters, uh, protesters who died. As they, as they uh, increased the, the, their savagery, the protesters retaliated. They started to suck benzene from uh, gasoline and gas from the tanks of the barked cars and put them to make a Molotov and attack the anti-right police. They carried cars from the street and put it in, by the woods of the street as a shield, as a metal shield, and start to drag them to get a close range from the anti-right police to throw at them Molotov and, and rocks, okay? Okay. When we started to do this, and we started to make casualties in, uh, uh, at the ranks, they started to, to, to fall back until we reached the, uh, the building of the interior ministry. Then suddenly, I, I was among the protesters, I, I, I joined them. I know it was not our battle, I know it's our battle to sit in, in the square, but I couldn't help it, you, you, you can't just control this. So suddenly, as I rush, as what it seems as a victorious end to all these struggles that lasted for three or four hours, suddenly while I'm running, I find three or four of my fellow, my fellow protesters just lie down, dead, no epical pulsation, no uh, radial pulsation, they are dead. I, I, I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it at first, there was no uh, blood, there was no any sign of anything, then there was no sound, then we, we just get it. At the rooftop of the uh, Ministry of Interior, Interior Ministry, there were snipers, they were shooting us, I was aiming to the chest, to the heart, or either to the head. Uh, by some miracle, I didn't die. I retreated to a nearby street, and I can see by myself at, that at least a dozen or more of the protesters lying dead on the street. Of course, the snipers had a very long range to shoot. They continued shooting us as they make us retreat all the way to the street. I think the casualties that uh, was rising was more than 60 or 70, and the, 
the dead protesters, maybe more than 25, 26, I don't know, but the, the funerals from the mosque nearby were, were endless. Uh, the amazing things to, to me, the very amazing thing, despite all this, the protesters, of course, we didn't came to close to the Ministry of Interior again, but the amazing things, all the protesters were gathering, were preparing Molotov, were preparing cars to push against the Ministry of Interior, were preparing masks that they took and helmets they took from the uh, security, and was preparing to again try to storm the Ministry of Interior. One, one last thing, uh, when I went to the hospital, nearby hospital, Ahmed Mahar Hospital, I take some bullets in my back. So I saw one of the brothers of the, uh, of the dead protesters. Uh, uh, protester. Uh, 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 he called his father to get, to get his brother, and he rushed back to the Tahrir Square. This was amazing. The repression didn't work. Neither did the Mubarak regime's attempt to provoke looting, often organized by plainclothes police officers. The revolution responded by forming popular militias, and they now protect neighborhoods, control checkpoints, and search cars. They jointly control the entrances to Tahir Square with the army. On the eve of the 1st of February, the army, even though it had not acted decisively against Mubarak, was under such pressure that it issued a statement saying that it would defend the protesters' right to demonstrate. From early morning on the 1st of February, the protesters in the square paint banners rig a huge screen to show film and prepare for the crowd to mass. From the day before, the square has been repeatedly buzzed by a military helicopter. Protesters write on the square in huge letters, we will not leave, so that the helicopter crew can read it. Then stewards keep the crowd from standing on it so that it can still be read from above. In areas around, activists gather in their offices to prepare for the day. Uh, on the morning of the seventh day of the Egyptian Revolution, we're in the uh, centre for the closest renewal current, just a few hundred yards from Korea Square. I talk to a group of worker activists about what they think about the revolution so far and what they think the future holds. بالنسبة لي أنا حي من بقاله 35 سنة كنت بغادر عشان أتعامل خصوصا إن النظام دون ولا الترجمة خصوصا إن النظام دون صادر كل الحقوق العمالية وصادر كل المنظمات العمالية حتى الاتحاد العام للعمال بقى أكتر من إنه كان متأمن بقى نظام عميل وفاسد الحقيقة الثورة بالنسبة لي مفاجأة جميلة مفاجأة جميلة بمعنى إنه لا طول الوقت احنا مؤمنين بان الناس هي اللي هتتغير والناس في وقت ما هتتحرك وتتغير وتكنس كل الزباله دي بس لانه هذا النظام القومي كان بيفتت كل اشكال التنظيم في وسط الناس سواء عمال او فلاحين او او حتى القوى السياسيه فكان بالنسبه لي انه لسه في وقت محتاجين نشتغل اكتر بكتير علشان يبقى في ثوره بتقوم فعشان كده كانت مفاجاه جميله بالنسبه لي. I think there, are, there were a number of contributing factors. I cannot say one thing on its own if it happened on its own would have had the same effect. I think we had long years of, of repression, we have declining living standards, we have a, 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 a police state that is getting by the day more dangerous to normal people, more aggressive towards normal people. Uh, uh, that was a factor. I believe that the, the, the democracy movement however minute and small it was over the past five years, had an impact of people really raising the bar on, on, on anti-Mubarak and anti-government and pro-democracy demands. It, the, the wave of strikes and sit-ins by workers and, and public sector in Belize and in, in general, uh, uh, people really started more and more to take to the streets to demand their rights. They were, this, these were small uh, uh, sectoral or, 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 or direct benefits, but there was that taking place. Uh, uh, the last election was, was, I think, was significant because the regime just decided to play a really stupid game, saying we are 95%, uh, we got 95 percent of the world because people love us. And the, everyone knew that. We don't know of a person, let alone of a, of a, of a section of society that, that's pro-Mubarak or pro-regime. And I think the final straw was Tunisia. I think Tunisia was, was inspiring to the normal people, to the normal individual, to the apolitical, the non-politicized people, 
who live under this, who, who really had the problem of what can we do in discussion with people in the past years. Yes, we agree this regime is corrupt. Yes, we agree that, that it's, not, it's not for its people. What can we do? And we really didn't have something concrete to answer with. We didn't know. People were asking about alternatives. We were asking about, okay, who can lead the alternatives, things like that. Tunisia just showed in, in slow motion, in a sense, not very slow motion, but in, in that, A, you don't need an alternative to bring down that the current corrupt uh, dictatorship. Alternatives will emerge from, from the movement. So, so uh, and that if you stand your ground and you don't waver, then the mighty police dictatorship just pulls apart. الثورة التعليلية القضاء على سلطة الفساد والاستبداد والإفقار تعني الاتجاه دفع قوة ضغط أضيفة للطبقة العاملة المصرية من أجل إزالة كل أثار الماضي سيطرة حفنة قليلة على مقدرات الأمور تعني حريات حريات نقابية وحريات سياسية للشعب المصري تعني القضاء على الاحتكارات اللي موجودة في البلد وفتح الطريق قدام حصول الشعب على حقه في ثروة بلاده بدل من احتكار فئة قليلة ليها يعني جوعت شعبنا كله. Demonstrations representing every locality of Cairo and every section of Egyptian society poured into Tahrir Square. These are the judges who've been locked in conflict with the Mubarak regime arriving in the square. Here because we felt like we cannot stay at home while people are, are dying in the streets because they have a cause. We felt that we have to come here and do whatever we can. So we came here with, our, with some markers and some papers and we just kept on writing some words for people to hold on to. Throughout the day, protests by particular groups would demonstrate within the larger crowd. This is a women's protest. Muslims used the banners as prayer mats and were protected on this day, as on others, by Christians as they prayed. The massive crowd not only filled Tahrir Square, perhaps five times the size of London's Trafalgar Square, but spilled back for at least a block into the surrounding streets. Two million demonstrated in Cairo, and although we will never really know, it is estimated that between four million and ten million demonstrated in cities and towns across Egypt. Suez was in a state of insurrection and Malhala, the great textile centre, saw 100,000 out of its population of 250,000 take to the streets. Towards the end of the afternoon, I talked to Tamir Awagdi of the Socialist Renewal Current about his view of the day. Today is uh, a decisive day. Uh, things are developing in this revolution uh, by the hour. Uh, uh, I think that today is a decisive day, just like uh, Tuesday, the 25th, 
and Friday the 28th. They were both turning point. The first one is the uh, start of the revolution and the second one was the uh, transformation of the revolution into a mass uh, movement, a mass revolution all, all over the country. Now today it's taking uh, a, a new step by, uh, let's say, uh, developing into uh, a, a mass strike and uh, maybe there are 10 million people now in uh, Egypt's streets uh, chanting slogans against Mubarak united uh, in their movement. Uh, the regime tried to uh, sabotage the day in different ways. All of these ways proved uh, that the regime is over uh, because everything didn't uh, prevent this uh, 10 million day uh, to develop. Uh, I think that politically uh, Mubarak uh, is over, maybe today or maximum tomorrow, or at the most maximum on uh, Friday, uh, the regime, uh, Mubarak's regime will be over. But this would be another decisive and turning point because the arrangements for the developments afterwards uh, are now taking place between various forces. Uh, the basic argument that can be said in this uh, regard is that uh, it depends on the mass movement and its level of organization and its class composition, how the arrangements that will follow would take shape. What's the shape of the developments that will follow after Mubarak's toppling will depend on various factors. The most important among them, the mass movement, its composition, its class composition. So, let me say the basic factor uh, that, that, that should be taken into consideration and the thing that we agitate enormously about is to ask people to continue being organized, continue being in the streets even after Mubarak is toppled and to try to form class-based organizations because this will be detrimental for the development after Mubarak toppled. As night fell, the crowd stayed in Tahrir Square. There was a mood of elation, a carnival mood as people celebrated their own capacity to mobilise. Everywhere across the city centre, speeches were being made, intense circles of debate formed in the streets, and songs were being sung. In the mid-evening, I pushed my way through the crowd to find internationally renowned Egyptian novelist Adaf Suwaif. As far as you're concerned, what does this day represent in the process of the Egyptian revolution? Well, I think we're only really going to know this when the day ends. Of course, we were hoping that this day would uh, represent our victory, the victory of the revolution, and will end with the departure of President Mubarak and his regime. Um, if that doesn't happen, then it will still be a, a real marker because, uh, you know, the call went out yesterday for a million people and in fact, it's probably been more like four million across the country. So, um, that is just a measure of, of, I don't know, of the success of this, of the validity of this uh, revolution and the fact that people have uh, have not just come out, but it's, it's really, it's like every person's personal cause. I mean, one guy was looking at people walking through and saying, goodness, you know, what's Mubarak done to each and every one of these people? So that's really what, what it feels like. And the fact that it's kept its momentum, it's kept its good humor. Um, so uh, it's, it's really important. Where it falls exactly remains to be seen. Late at night, President Mubarak made a speech saying that he would step down, but not for six months. This was far short of what the protesters wanted. They wanted Mubarak and his ministers and the whole system of government gone immediately. The reaction of the crowd in Tahrir Square was swift and it was angry. Every protester in the square insisted that the struggle would go on until the regime was removed. The day that followed the great demonstration could not have been more of a contrast. The day of demonstrations had shown everything that was progressive, honourable, even beautiful about Egyptian society. But the following day showed how corrupt and brutal the Mubarak regime 
really was. Police in plain clothes and hired thugs swept into Tahrir Square in a counter-revolutionary mob, wounding and killing protesters as they tried to force them out of the square. With incredible bravery and invention, the revolutionaries fought back. They built barricades and they forced the thugs back out of the square. By the end of the week, the huge crowds had retaken Tahrir Square and the thugs of the regime had, for the moment, been pushed back. The revolution had survived. We cannot know what the future of the revolution holds, but it is already the most profound social movement of the new century.